Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Java 4 Beginners uh, tutorial series. This is going to be episode number 11 and we're going to be talking a little bit about the next uh, looping structure that we're going to be using and it is known as for. And for is a lot like while except it allows us to do a lot more stuff in just the declaration of for. Now you remember how we had to uh, earlier on we had to declare int i equals zero and whatever else, right? Well, let's comment that out. In the declaration of a for, the first part of the for is typically known as the initialization. Now we can start off by saying int i equals zero. And if there is no i in existence, this will create one. Now, there's a little caveat on that. So please don't, you know, jump ahead or else this isn't going to make sense why your stuff isn't working. Now, the next part is, let's say i is less than 10. And this middle part right here is known as the conditional. This is the condition under which your loop will continue to execute. And now the last part is I plus plus the or the increment or, you know, the it'll be pointer later on. But for now, it's just the increment. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. And then all we need in the middle is a simple system dot out dot print lin. I can type today. And we're just going to print out an i. Now when we run that, you'll see that we get the same 0 to 9 that we did with that while, except we've put all the information that was needed in the while right in this one little thing. So we took the the declaration and we took the incre uh, increment and we've added it into this sort of test here. Now, the caveat that I wanted to talk to you guys about is remember how when we use the while statement, um, we had declared the i out here. Well, if we then try to use the i again, what you're going to notice is that we can't run this. And so if we do a clean and build, it'll tell us why. And in this case, you can kind of see that there's a, a little issue here and it says cannot find symbol on line 11. And let me tell you why it's doing that. When we declare something inside of a for, even if it's in these parentheses before the scope operator, it's considered to be part of the scope of the for. So the way that you should think about a for loop is actually having a, a scope operator immediately after the word for and everything in here is going to be contained inside that for loop. Now, we don't necessarily need to declare int right there. What we can do is uncomment this and get rid of the word int. And let's just say that we don't set i equal to zero here. We just declare int i. Now our code is actually going to be correct because what this means is that it's declared outside of the loop and anything that's declared outside of the loop will remain after our loop executes but if something is declared in the loop it dies in the loop meaning that the actual reference to that variable is destroyed at the exit of the loop so if this did have int before it it would be destroyed at the matching ending bracket. So if we give this a run, it's going to print out 0 through 10 because the variable that did not, or well, when i did not satisfy this condition, it was equal to 10. So this is for loops, and for loops are very easy. Um, they really do tell you exactly what you need to know. And again, we can uh, do this the other way just a real quick show if we if we just switched around so i equals 10 and is uh, greater than 0 we subtract it 
And again, that's just going to count down from 10 to 0. Sorry about that. I thought I was going to be interrupted, but I wasn't. Okay, and so that's um that's basically how we use fours. I mean, if you couldn't tell, there's really not that much to it. Um, but loops in general have a lot of different uses. Um, let me think of a good one. Well, first things first, I'm going to say i is equal to zero. Um, actually, I won't because I don't want to confuse you guys right off the bat. Well, let's say that we just wanted to make a, a nested for loop. So we'll say for i is equal to zero, uh, eh, i is less than five, i plus plus. And now what we'll do is make uh, an int j as well. And this is, this is actually a very common uh, question to see on um, school finals. It was actually uh, a final at my, or yeah, it was the final to uh, intro for C++. And I've probably answered this question on Yahoo Answers about 50 times. So here's what you're going to run into. You're going to see something like this. Um, and then you're just going to see system.out.print. Okay. And what this is going to do is this is going to print out a set of numbers sort of like this. And so we'll, we'll give this a quick run. And well, that didn't quite do what I had wanted it to because I should be going up to equals i and I should be starting at one for that. And I do believe that I should be starting at or doing less than or equal to five as well. So, okay, that builds us a one to five little kind of pyramid. Now let's assume that we want to count back down. We can actually just copy paste this whole thing And what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this and we're just going to leave that blank. Um, we can say 4i if we want, but we won't. We'll say 4i is greater than or equal to zero. i minus minus. And in this case, why we're leaving this blank, this first part, is because we don't need to initialize i to anything. What we really want to do is we want to, uh, we want to take the variable and just have it be whatever it presently is. So it's subtracting there, and I think that the rest of it actually stays the same because j should just print out whatever i is presently equal to. And we'll give that a run, and that didn't quite work how I wanted it to. Um, what have I done here? Oh. So while i is greater than or equal to zero. And there you go. That's how you're going to make a, a pyramid of these things. Now, another thing that you might want to consider doing is allowing for user input to kind of determine the size of this pyramid. So let's do this. Um, let's go with a new one. We'll just call it a user cell for user select. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to define it like this. Equals um, input dot next int. And I suppose we'll add a system dot out dot print. Jesus, that was a bad one. And and we'll say enter a number. Okay, and so what we have here is we have a nested for, very similar to a nested if. You'll notice that our uh, brackets are lining up, and I'll actually label this so you guys can see it better. We'll say end outer loop, end inner loop, start inner 
loop. Start outer loop. And again, same thing here. Uh, start outer loop. Start inner loop. Print current value of j. And inner loop. and outer loop. Okay, so what we're going to do is, since we're counting down from a variable, or counting up to a variable rather, we'll just say, um, well, i is less than user cell. And that's actually going to handle everything, just changing that one little word right there. So we give this a run, and let's enter the number nine, because if you do it with 10, it kind of looks like crap. And uh, as you can see, I have an off by one error here. And I believe that the reason why I have an off by one error is because, let's try doing it uh, less than rather than less than or equal to. So we'll do nine again, and there you have it. We've made ourselves a nice little pyramid of numbers uh, using nested for loops. Now, I want you guys to know that if you don't exactly understand this, I truly encourage you to ask me questions about it. Um, because we just skipped from doing ifs all the way up to doing nested for loops in about uh, 10 minutes time. And that's not something that's easy to get your head around. But the reason why I did this is because this is really good theory right here. Um, it's printing, you know, uh, it's, it's controlling data in a very specific way that's going to help you sort of learn how to, how to do it. Now, the reason why I didn't put anything there is because, well, honestly, I suppose I could have done I equals user cell, but it's already equal to that. So there's really no reason for me to do that as it's going to remain the same and it's just more code. Um, I suppose I'll keep it like this, just so you guys can see that there's something here, even though there doesn't need to be. Um, aside from that, I suppose I'll just finish commenting this off. And so that's, uh, that's how we make just a, a sort of pyramid counter, as you can see it kind of has that shape. All right, well... I encourage you guys to ask questions. This is going to be a very hard lesson to get your minds around. And we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, loops next lesson. Um, this lesson, I really should have done this lesson right before the homework. But the lesson that precedes the homework will be a lot easier than this. So if you don't exactly understand this right yet, don't fret. The next one will be better. All right, and this has been Damien for uh, Java for Beginners. Um, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. See you around.